everyone, this is Maria and today I want to share with you some vintage magazines from 1934 from the Great Depression era. These are Child Life magazines. It's called Child Life, the children's own magazine. They're all dated 1934. This one is October's and this one is November. I love the art. On the bottom it says Rand McNally and Company Publishers. This one is January. There's some really awesome covers. And this one is April. I love that Easter bunny. It says Easter Greetings. And this one is May 1934. And this one is the only one where the cover has actually separated from the rest of the magazine. So while I was doing my research for Butterfly Hollow, I turned to eBay and I was searching for items that maybe my character may have owned at that time or she may have seen. And so chances are she would have seen these magazines if she didn't own them herself. She could have seen them at a library. She could have seen them in a doctor's office. So the first time I was flipping through the pages of Child Life magazine, I came across this. And there was only one. It says Child Life order blank, five months for one dollar. This must have been a trial period. And so because Child Life magazine at this time, there's also another ad in the magazine that says for a year that it's three dollars. So the magazine was available every single month. So for a dollar you got five issues. I think that was pretty good. But anyways, I was really excited to find this and like I said, there was only one of these in the magazine. So I love Halloween and October is my very favorite month of the year. So let's go ahead and flip through the October Child Life magazine. And so look at the cover. It is so cute you guys and so vintage. And look at this dog right here. It looks kind of scared. And here's the black cat and the jack-o-lantern. There's a spooky house in the background and then there's a splintered fence with a cobweb and a spooky tree back here. And so I really love this cover. I think all of these magazines have really cool covers. So we open up the magazine and there's a little boy reading a book here. It says, make study a joy for your child. And then here is a message from Helen Keller, my message to you. And here is a poem by Rachel Fields, Something Told the Wild Geese. So that's a really nice way to start off this magazine. And then we get into some of the spooky stuff. And this is what I would have loved as a kid. And so would my character, Charlene. This story is called The Witch's Cat Comes Back. And look at the cat. Isn't that funny? And I love all of the artwork. So much fun. And let's turn this page. I love this too. This is another favorite page. This one is titled Halloween Tickle Town. It was Halloween in Tickle Town. Every house had pumpkin faces on the gate post, all but Farmer Sauerkraut. He had a cross dog instead. On cabbage night, the boys and girls pulled up everybody's cabbages. They rattled Tick Tocks on Molly Bean Soup's window to make her jump. They took Deacon Dandelion's garden bench and put it on Old Lady Blue Nose's porch roof. They used Joe Gingersnap's ladder and left it there. Next morning, everyone came to see. Allie Buttercup walked round the block with her mouth full of water, knowing she would marry the first man she met. She got a surprise when it turned out to be the deaf old scissor grinder. Mrs. Treetop sent Jenny to the store to buy a dozen eggs. On the way home, she met a scarecrow. Then she heard an owl hooting. So she dropped her eggs and ran. Peter Prunepick gave a party in the evening. The boys dunked for apples and ate pumpkin pie. Then they sat on the doorstep. Peter told ghost stories and made the boys laugh. But on the way home, they saw one, a real ghost, only it turned out to be Farmer Sauerkraut's old white horse in the field. That is so funny. It says here, this is a picture story by Lois Lenski. So these two pages are definitely among my favorite in this October issue of Child Life magazine. And so I'm going to turn the page where we have a story called The Adventure of Bumps by Helen Train Hills. And so this is a continuous story where children can act it out in play form. At the back of the magazine, there are character cutouts that kids could clip out and put on their own play. I know in one of the magazines, I saw that you could even order your own little theater. And so let me go ahead and flip the page and we still have the story here with some color art. 
Here is Mystery at the Fair by Frances Cavanaugh. And so I did notice that each of the magazines has a mystery story. So I think my character, Charlene Parker, would have loved these. And so she did listen to mystery theater on the radio, like the shadow. Look at this art. It's so great. I love this. This Halloween story here is called The Little Pumpkin's Guest by Ruth Gibson Plowhead. And so look at the art again. On the neighboring page, we have the Lewis and Clark Expedition. It's a puzzle. It says, find President Jefferson, who sent out the expedition, and Monroe, who helped to negotiate the Louisiana Purchase. And so it has different things to look for in the picture. I used to love things like that, like in uh, magazines like Highlights. Here's another story. It's called The Story of Midget. And you can see there's a little burrow here. And there's a little girl with the burrow. At the center of the magazine, there's a two-page pictorial. It's called The Animals Go to the Fair. And so there's all different kinds of animals from all over the world. And what I like about the advertisements in this magazine is they take up an entire page like this one for cream of wheat cereal. So we have the little boy that looks healthy and happy. He's holding on to his football. He's got his football helmet on. At the top it says, is your child in for a siege of miserable colds? And then the little strip on top with the children uh, speaking and you have the little bubbles there. It says, come on out, Tommy. We have to get a new halfback if Tommy keeps getting colds. You used to be a trained nurse, sis. What makes Tommy catch one cold after another? His resistance must be low. Build it up with high energy breakfast or cream of wheat. Atta boy, Tommy. Bet you we beat 100 to zero with Tommy playing. So then we have the block of text and it says, during these extra dangerous years, every little child needs one special protection. Science tells us that 85% of all cases of contagious disease occur during the short span of years after babyhood. Many of them start with a common cold. Okay, as a mother in 1934, even a mother when I was raising my kids, that would have scared me. And I would have been feeding my kids cream of wheat <laughs> if I thought that that might protect them from colds. So I love reading these ads because it gave me an idea what Charlene's mother might have been reading while she was looking through these magazines when Charlene wasn't going through them. So Charlene would have been more interested in the stories, in the play, and things like that and mom would have been reading the ads. And so this is read aloud time. And so it shows mom reading to her children. So here's another ad that takes up an entire page. It says, save her first steps in movies. Now movies cost less than 10 cents a shot with Cine Kodak 8. Now this movie camera costs $34.50. And I mean, I bet a lot of people wish they could have had this, but $34.50 was quite a bit of money during the Great Depression, our book friends. And so it has a list of different books that are available and that you could order. And on the neighboring page is another full ad for Britannica Jr. It says, just off the press, opening a vast new world to your children, Britannica Jr. And it shows a little boy at the bottom of the page with his encyclopedias. So here we have the well-dressed child fall fashion leaves. So these are the latest fashions for fall. I have a feeling that a lot of moms were sewing their own clothes for their kids and kids were wearing hand-me-downs during the Great Depression. On this page, we have a continuation of the Little Pumpkin Guest story, and we have an ad for sun-made raisins. This looks fun. It says, Halloween fun comes only once a year. Four o'clock fun comes every day. Isn't it sport to play pillowcase spook on Halloween night and fun to wear long nose mask and carry grinning jack-o'-lanterns? Too bad this night happens only once each year, but never mind. Here is a kind of fun you can have every day of the whole year long. It is this new four o'clock fun, that jolly raisin feast after school with a big handful of clean sun-made raisins, those sweet plump ones. They chase hungriness away. Besides, they are so very good for you because they give you lots of energy for play for schoolwork too. Just be sure of one thing, 
Be sure mother buys sun-made raisins. They're the juicy kind with the happy sunbonnet girl on the box. So the advertisers were really smart here. They started off with Halloween fun comes only once a year. And so they have all of these pictures here for kids to read with a little story. So you know what? I have a feeling that my character Charlene would be reminding her mother to buy sun-made raisins. I know I would. So this is really cute. It says voted the most popular radio program by thousands of school pupils. Listen in to Buck Rogers in the 25th century. And they are advertising Coco Malt. And on the neighboring page, we have another advertisement. It says, and are we hungry? And it shows kids playing. It looks like after school, he's got his football and his books and she's on her bicycle. And it's advertising Kellogg's Corn Flakes. And near the back of the magazine are these cutouts that I was mentioning to you before for the story, The Adventure of Bump. So we have all of the characters here and they are in color. And so a child could cut these out or they could trace them and color them themselves. So this way they could have them for more play. On this page here, we have a game called Witch Witch, a game by Hazel Frazzy. And so there's directions down here and that looks like a lot of fun too. And I really like this advertisement for Crayola. It says, yes, everybody can get a dandy gift in Crayola Drawing Club's big fall contest starting next month. I mean, right there, what? kid wouldn't want to know about a contest sponsored by Crayola. Turning hero worship into health. To be like Tom Mix, to become one of his Ralston straight shooters, a million more boys and girls began to eat Ralston wheat cereal last year. Now they eat this double rich hot cereal regularly because it tastes so good. And so the cowboy here in this advertisement is Tom Mix, and he was so famous back then, kids knew him so well. He was a famous cowboy in Western films. On the back cover of the magazine, there is a full color ad. It says, children like their style, mothers like their economy, garments. So this is an advertisement for children's modern underwear and nightwear. And so it's by Minneapolis Knitting Works. I love the ad for the artwork. I love the pumpkins that they're holding, the jack-o'-lanterns. Another magazine that I purchased was this one here called Nature Magazine. And so since Charlene does have a dog, Rusty Nails, this sort of reminded me of Rusty Nails here, and it has some really neat nature articles in here. Another magazine that I purchased is the American Magazine. This is the 1934 June issue, and the original cost was 25 cents. So this is a magazine that Charlene's mama might have read in Butterfly Hollow. And since Butterfly Hollow takes place over the course of a year from 1934 to 1935, I purchased this magazine, The Rotarian, mostly because I just love the cover because it says 1934. So these are the magazines from 1934 during the Great Depression that my character Charlene Parker may have read while she was growing up in Butterfly Hollow. Thanks for watching everyone and have a great day. Bye-bye.